Welcome back to Blackstone. Today's update will take a while. There's lots of running in circles. This ice pick was used by Dr. Metcalf to perform over 500 prefrontal lobotomies. Once the ice pick was inserted below the eyelid, a few taps of this hammer were sufficient to break through into the brain. A simple yet effective tool. It's quite well designed. All the weight is in the head. I want this. Such a violent topic for such a peaceful place. A peaceful place? Keep that in mind for the next few minutes. I don't believe the pillars are structural, but I would like to test the theory. That is St. Crispin. They drove awls under his fingernails, cut strips of skin from his back, and then put him in a vat of boiling lead. That is Joan of Arc, burned at the stake. Quite mad, you know. Claimed she heard voices. That is Saint Adrian of Nicodemia. He was a Roman soldier who was thrown in prison for his beliefs. His legs were smashed with an anvil and they chopped off his arms with an axe. He's a patron saint of prison warders. Saint Christopher. He was thrashed with an iron rod, then a red-hot helmet was put over his head and he was beheaded. He's the patron saint of accidents. They're meant to handle overflow from the pews, although I don't recall that ever being necessary. They're in the English Gothic style, but were custom built to fit this room. You're welcome to stay, but you seem to be in a bit of a hurry. Always a sound idea, but one need not be in a chapel to speak to the Lord. Beautiful, isn't it? The glass was imported from France. In 1960, Howard Dully, a 12-year-old American boy, was lobotomized by none other than Dr. Freeman, who invented transorbital lobotomy. Decades later, he did some research, attracted media attention, and in 2007, he published an autobiographical book titled My Lobotomy. Look it up. is St. Vincent. He was lacerated with hooks and pincers, then roasted on a grid. St. Agatha had her uh, breasts cut off and then was rolled naked on a bed of hot coals mixed with sharp splinters of glass. Frank sounds like he's enjoying these tales. They had a chaplain who actually lived on the premises and performed the services. I just played the organ. Saint Sebastian, patron saint of frail and sickly children. He was tied to a tree and shot with hundreds of arrows. When that didn't kill him, they clubbed him to death and dumped his body into Rome's main sewer. It is a copy made from a painting of St. George. Afraid not, it weighs several hundred pounds. It's welded together. Were I a dragon, I wouldn't care to be on the other end of that. Give me that. <laughs> it's attached. Doesn't make a dent. Fine, keep it. 
It's a splendid instrument, predating the asylum itself. It was imported from Germany by Charles Connolly. A fellow musician? Delightful! Unfortunately, it is currently under repair. Welcome! It seems most of the other people I've met were inmates. I guess I just grew attached to this wonderful old organ. Well, and of course I couldn't be away today of all days. What's so special? April 23rd is the feast day of St. George. It's also Shakespeare's birthday, which altogether makes it a great day for England. And of course, there's always tomorrow. What happens then? Why, it's your birthday, Oliver. St. Mark's Eve. Did you know children born that day can see spirits and talk to ghosts? I guess you're proving the legend true. I don't believe in the supernatural. If I'm lucky, this is all a dream. If I'm not, then I'm having some kind of prolonged hallucination. It always amazes me how far people will go to close their eyes on what's all around them. Very well, Oliver. Believe what you will. Okay, we've got some items. Let's go back to the surgery. Might as well check Frank on the way. Not on record. Lucky. Yay, you came back. Just like you promised. Let's play more I Spy. Let's go. Great. I Spy with my lie. Something that's white. How white are we talking? Did you find it yet? I'm not very good at remembering. Something that is white. Not even close. Come on, you're not even trying. You got that one already. Try again. Oh, no repeats. The clock is ticking. You're so cold you're at the no- Nope. That was the answer before, silly. Guess again. That's a rotten guess. And now the best reply. <laughs> How does a ghost do that? My diploma. Right! Let's keep playing. I spy with my little eye something that begins with tiger. I've started a tunnel, Dad. I'm gonna dig my way out. I saw them do it on Scooby-Doo. Be careful, Josh. Don't hurt yourself. Okay, Dad. Hey, Josh. I need help with a kind of a riddle. What is it? What is something that begins with tiger? You know, like in a game of I Spy. Let me see. Tigers go grrr. How about grapes, or maybe ground? Thanks, Josh. You've been a big help. This is a tough one. Too hard for you? Can you give me a reminder? I spy something that begins with tiger. How can something begin with tiger? Come on, even a four-year-old can get that one. I can't figure... You're too grown up. I bet your little boy could figure it out. It's much easier if you've already examined everything. And noticed the grate. Great! Get it? A tiger goes growl. I used to be afraid of all kinds of animals. Just like the cowardly lion in the Wizard of Oz. But now I'm not afraid anymore. Do you? Oh yes, especially the ruby slippers. How come you're not afraid? I just pretend I made of metal like the Tin Man. 
Then if an animal bites me, it won't hurt. I think that's smart thinking. The operation still hurt, though. But Dr. Metcalf isn't like an animal who's trying to hurt me. He's trying to make me better. So that's different. Is he your favorite? Nope. Scarecrow. The Tin Man has that hollow sound that's kind of scary. Like the night in the chapel. You mean there's nothing in there? Sure. They used to lift up the visor and put stuff in there all the time. Then they told us we couldn't do that anymore. I like how his legs are all rubbery. I think Dorothy liked them too. Remember at the end when she said, I'll miss you most of all. That's what I said to my mom when they brought me here. That's why I want my doll so much. It reminds me of her. We'll have to look into that night, literally. It's locked. A long time ago, I threw away the key for a joke. But Dr. Metcalf just uses one of his tools to open it. I've got lots of his tools. We need only one. Another evil box. That's the tune Dr. Metcalf always hums when he opens that door. The door, you say? Don't go down there. Bad things happen there. Da, 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 da. That's what Dr. Metcalf always hums when he opens that door. No, no. Dr. Metcalf is the only one who knows how to work it. He never lets anyone else push the buttons. Okay, the sensible course of action is to consult the resident musical expert. And destroy the night. Welcome! That's box three-part invention in F minor. You should hear that on a pipe organ. Bach certainly knew how to write. No wonder Dr. Metcalf liked him so much. Bach, remember that. Doesn't make a dent. Yeah, we need something better. What are you doing? Leave that alone! There's something inside that I need. <laughs> I say, your hacksaw snapped clean in two. How convenient. It's gone. Those straps hold the arms and the breastplate on. I don't know if it will ever be quite the same again. Remember I sharpened the knife in the first update? This is where you really need to do that. That's the doll I was looking for. Take it with my blessing. How did they carry these things around? Fine, I'll get trapped again. Going for a ride, Oliver? Do be careful. Why?
wondering where the next spear will come from? It's locked. It's not that complicated. All you have to do is unlock it. Sorry, the key you need isn't on that ring. Ah, that would be the question. How? The problem with these spears is that you never know where the next one is going to come from. It should fit the lock, but I can't reach it. <sighs> Too far. Let's use the item we just got. Another easy solution. Perfect. It's beautiful. No wonder he wants it back. It's a pretty boring trap, honestly. Now you'll see the key back on the hook. Strange. Malcolm has only one more line here. You won't be able to dodge them forever. Don't you think you should leave? I agree. Good idea. You should probably hurry. Excellent, Oliver. Well done. My final resting place, or it will be as soon as this evening's work is done. <sighs> Can't lift it. That's a shame. Congratulations. You have lived to fight another day. I swear we've heard this before. That's Marilyn Wilson. She burned herself to death with that stupid lighter. Meryl Martin, or perhaps you remember her as Lorena. She died during surgery after she swallowed her locket. This matches Lorena's death in the book. Meaning her story about the locket being a gift from her father is a lie. She snatched it from a doctor who extracted it. That's a memorial to your little friend from the surgery. His parents think he's buried here. We know differently, don't we? Lavinia Willoughby. One day she decided that Queen Elizabeth was going to kill her, so she hanged herself first. That's your old friend Seamus. You did realize he was a patient here, didn't you? That marker is for Nick Brennan. I wanted to see if the bubonic plague would drive out his Alzheimer's. It didn't. Jack Kramer. He was a tough one. He died when five attendants ganged up on him and strapped him in the ECT chair. They turned it on full power for five minutes. I had to reprimand them severely. Ah, Jane. She was too fragile for this place always wanting to go home. She died when an attendant locked her in the heat chamber and then went on a coffee break and forgot her. They died to advance science. It's wrong to experiment on people. We didn't experiment on them. We tried to cure them. You simply do not understand science, Oliver. You must try new things to see if they work. Otherwise, progress will never be made. You killed them. Sometimes people have to die so that others may live. These patients were... unlucky. Let's leave this place.
Wait, it's the metal door. It locks behind you every time you go through. I've hidden that key especially for you, but I'll give you a clue where to find it. You always liked riddles, Oliver. Try this one. My office quite fast, yielded keys manifold, but you'll find the last in the one who knows cold. Surprisingly, it's not in some ice block in the freezer we'll have to spend hours melting. No, can't find her here like that. I have some questions for the man with the organ. Hey, where's the lift? Welcome! Are there stairs? Not through here, I'm afraid. The journey you took was a one-time affair. What happened to it? You said you believed this was all in your head. Shouldn't you be asking yourself that question? Oliver's figments of imagination raise surprisingly solid points. It's as if they were real. Anyway, we've got the doll. My doll! Thank you! Can we play one more game of I Spy? Just one? Please? But just one. Thanks. Here we go. I Spy with my little eye. Something that's red. Well, the table is red. Or was red. But we can't answer it again. Yeah. Wait, is it red as a color, or red as in read? You figured it out. Get it? I love that joke. Anyway, you win! I think we both won. You're fun. Thanks for playing with me. Dr. Metcalf never plays with me. He doesn't even call me by my name. He just calls me one, two, five. That's strange. He says it's a code. He gets it from my nickname. What's your real name? Abraham Wagner. I guess that's why my mom called me Abby. Don't you ever get mad at Dr. Metcalf? Why? He's doing the best he can. My mom says that's all we can ever expect from someone, that he does the best he can. So that's what I try to do, too. You're fun. Thanks for playing with... So, he's 125. Let's check the computer. To sum it up, we know he's a... That's the first, the second, and the fifth letters of the alphabet. Hence, one to five. What was the word you associate with the door? It's the music. It's bark. Bark is two, one, three, eight. I could have cut the update here, but things are just getting good. What's happening, Dad? I'm not sure, Josh, but I'm trying to fix it. And make sure to give Freddy good snuggles, okay? Okay, Dad. Hello, Oliver. I've been waiting for you. I'm glad you made it this far. After everything Malcolm has told me about you, I'd have been disappointed if I didn't get a chance to meet you. Come on over and talk to me. Or take a look around first, and I'll tell you about our setup. Hmm. 
This doesn't look like a therapy room. It's a medieval torture chamber. Um... Let's talk to the owner of the voice. See? You found me! What is your name? I'm Paul Becker. I was an associate of your father's. What is this place? This was our laboratory. I've never seen a place like this. Oh, it's not your standard Beaker and Bunsen burner kind of setup. Nevertheless, this is where we conducted our research. What did you study? Pain. Malcolm and I made revolutionary discoveries. We learned that at the root of every accepted treatment for mental illness was pain. While others saw pain as an unfortunate byproduct of, of various therapies, only Malcolm and I saw that pain was in fact the essential element to every cure. What makes you think that? If a person is mentally ill, it's because they have lost touch with their bodies. In other words, they're not in enough pain. How does it work? Hurting people brings them back to their senses. Well, you've seen it work on a small scale, like slapping someone who's become hysterical, or, or pinching yourself when you think you're dreaming. What we discovered is that it's true on a much more profound level. Our job here was to investigate how much pain was necessary to do the job. I'm sure some of the people here told you how much they wanted to avoid some of the treatments. <laughs> That's a mark of sanity. That meant they were getting better. All you do there is talk. Nah. That's good enough for minor neuroses. Anxieties, phobias, things like that. But you'll never cure a full-fledged psychotic by talking about his dreams and why he didn't like his mother. How can pain be good for you? Actually, it's good for everyone, not just psychotics. Pain heightens consciousness. Every moment spent in pain is a moment when you are truly alive. Pain is an essential part of everyone's daily life. It doesn't make sense. Well, sure it does. And on a subconscious level, <laughs> we all know it's true. You see it every day. When you touch a hot stove, you pull your hand back quickly. If you didn't feel the pain, your hand would burn up. When a child runs into the street, you spank him. The pain teaches him the lesson your words couldn't. Pain is all around us. Pain is good. You're insane. Well, I guess that's why they locked me up in the first place. But calling me names doesn't disprove the theory. You should give it some thought. Why didn't he work alone? Believe it or not, he was always a little squeamish when it came to the uh, practical application of the theory. I, on the other hand, enjoyed it. Before my lobotomy, I had already done quite a few experiments of my own. I thought lobotomies turned people into vegetables. Oh, not at all. In fact, some studies show that IQ actually rises after lobotomy. The real thing a lobotomy does is deaden your emotions. I should be real upset about that, but somehow I'm not. So Malcolm didn't actually hurt people himself? <laughs> Still looking to defend your old man, eh? Well, you remember that nutcracker you liked so much as a kid? Let me just say that nuts weren't the only thing Malcolm used it on. <laughs> At least not the kind of nuts you're thinking of. You were locked up here? Yeah. When I was a teenager, I killed a few animals and skinned them. People got upset. They said something was wrong with me. I guess what tipped the balance is when I cut up my best friend and put him in my closet. I want Joshua back. As it turns out, I know just where he is and how you can get there. But I want to help enlighten you first, so you'll have to meet me halfway. Take that box over there. Tell me what's inside it and then we can talk. What do you mean, enlighten? The box is a Japanese finger box. It's used in the Yakuza ritual of Yubitsami. If you stick your finger in the hole, you'll be able to feel the object inside and tell me what it is. The catch is that when you withdraw your finger, the tip will be chopped off. And what is Yubitsami? Yakuza is the name of the Japanese Mafia. 
Yubitsami is a ritual during which you cut off the tip of your own finger to prove your loyalty to the gang. What do you think it will prove? It'll help teach you the value of pain. Your son will become more valuable to you because of the pain you have suffered to recover him. I won't do it. Hey, no skin off my nose, if you'll pardon the expression. He's your kid. If you're not willing to swap the tip of your finger for his life, then maybe you're the one whose priorities are out of whack. Paul makes a bit too much sense for it to be comfortable. Nice, isn't it? Of course, I look better when I was alive. Yes, that's his skin. Stop! <sighs> Sorry, got carried away there. Just keep your hands off, okay? Ticklish, aren't we? Well, this is one of the few tools I brought with me. I've used it since I was a kid. The rest belong to Malcolm. Over my dead body? Uh, oh, uh, well, anyway, you can't have it. It was a good size for all-purpose work. Not too big, not too small. We use this mostly on teeth, but sometimes it's effective elsewhere. Good for precision work with the wheel. Really nice work, isn't it? Those Japanese really knew how to build a finger box. Hmm. No help. Let's take a look around. Virtually useless in a scientific setting. The pain can't be measured because it varies too much with the strength of the therapist. I was always surprised that simply squeezing could be so effective. Of course, the amount of pain varied with the body part that was being squeezed. It's a simple principle. The patient is tied to the wheel. His torso is supported, but his limbs have nothing behind them. With well-aimed blows, the therapist can pinpoint which bone, or which part of a particular bone, he wants to break. We almost never used it, because it caused too much damage. <laughs> but it sure scared the hell out of people. Sometimes, simple is best. You can do a lot of damage with the Louisville Slugger. Solid as an iron bar. Oh, well, we use this more to create fear than actual pain. The patient had a pretty good view of the therapies being conducted in other parts of the room. Salt. We used it by the bag full. It's called a Judas Cradle. Been around for centuries. You suspend a naked patient in chains adjusting his or her position until the desired body aperture is directly over the point, and then lower slowly. If you need to keep someone in one spot, these are what you need. It's an authentic antique from the Spanish Inquisition. Believe it or not, that was very hard to use. You wouldn't think so, would you? But if you hoist someone up too quickly, you can break their neck. And if you leave them there too long, they'll asphyxiate. That's why I didn't use it too often. It was just a big pain in the neck, so to speak. Da ah! Tell me what's in the finger box, and I'll tell you how to open it. Tell me about the finger box, I'll tell you about the symbols. Da I wouldn't go pushing those until you know more about them. It could be booby trapped. Last thing each night, we'd sharpen everything up for the next day. Malcolm hated dull tools. The trick here is not to let the blade cut too deeply and kill the patient. You can't cure a dead guy. We found a conventional table didn't give us enough control over placement and, and angle of the cuts. Well, that's the spirit! 
Too bad I'm not there to throw the lever for you. We used to be much better stocked than this. I'll bet there wasn't a day we didn't use that thing. You know, vomit, blood, small body parts. I knew you had a sense of humor. Now we put the thing in the thing. You couldn't do it, could you? I would have heard the sound. <laughs> nice try, though. I'll be waiting for you. And don't go trying to fake the sound. The test here is whether you can tell me what's inside. Can we stick something else in? Paul thinks he's so clever, but there's more than one way to skin a cat. Let's check his records. A prefrontal lobotomy resulting in a miracle recovery and an increase in IQ. I don't trust this record. You keep trying, but you can't bring yourself to do it, can you? Coward. We have nothing to discuss, Oliver. Solid as a... Here is just the machine we need. Why is there an arm in a Japanese finger box? Welcome back. Anything to tell me? It's an unk. Excellent. Now, while you're still in pain and thinking clearly, let's take the last step. Malcolm has taken my stereoscope and locked it up inside the Iron Maiden. I want it back. Open the Maiden, fetch me the stereoscope, and I'll tell you how to get to the secret room. What good will it do you? We spirits are tied to this earth by our affection for a particular item. We grow uncomfortable when the item is taken from us. How can I open it? You need to push the panels on the front in a certain order. Malcolm changed the pattern frequently, so I don't know what it is right now. But I know that he kept a reminder to himself in the safe in his office. Any more hints? So what did we find in that safe? There was that box we're never opening ever again, and that egg I broke. Curious. The word you seek is the thing itself. The thing itself? You'd better take that noose off first. Ah, the mandatory item. If you use it on someone, be sure to take up the tension slowly. Otherwise, they die right off. Thanks, will do. Do you get it? The word you seek is the thing itself. This thing is an Iron Maiden. That's an I. Run and there is a girl's silhouette, Maiden, China. I want to go home, Dad. Hang in there, Josh. We'll figure this out soon. Isn't it lovely? It allows you to see things the way you would like them to be. It unleashes your inner vision. Give it to me, and I'll tell you how to get to Josh. Over 400 years old, and still sharp. Isn't that amazing? The spikes are strategically placed to miss your vital organs. The odds of your surviving are actually pretty high. Almost 50-50. Aren't I feeling lucky today?
chickened out, did you? Come on! It probably won't kill you. Let's jam this thing apart. I think it'll hold. Stop struggling. Ah! Careful! Don't let the blade hit it! Really? It's only gonna hurt for a moment. Oh no. That's what got me into this in the first place. If you're not looking up at the blaze, you only get a clicking, whooshing noise. Trust me. We found a conventional table... So... You're just like everyone else. You all look at that lever as if you could magically pull it. <laughs> Instead, you should prepare for the pain. Accept the pain! Welcome the pain! As if you could reach it from there. Okay, it's getting closer. Any minute now. That's the last call. Oops, I died. These late-game deaths are a bit underdeveloped. Stop struggling! The stereoscope. You dropped it. <laughs> that was quite foolish, Oliver. Paul was ready to tell you the location of the secret room. But by destroying the stereoscope, you have killed him. He was your last hope of finding Joshua in time. Now I'm happy to tell you that every single item in this room has a comment from both Paul and Malcolm. So let's look at everything again and compare their tastes. You killed him. Oliver. Marilyn? Is that you? Go back to the crypt. What's in there? That's where the entrance to the secret room is. I can't open the closet door behind Malcolm's study. He told me a riddle, but I don't get it. He said I'll find the key in the one who knows cold. I guess I can't help much. All I know is that hydrotherapy gave me nose colds all the time, and Dr. Metcalf always called them rhinoviruses. Maybe that will help. How did you get out of your room? Before, I couldn't leave. Suddenly I could. I don't know why. That's a great explanation. Leave him alone. You can't. You killed him. Can you see this proves my point? The threat of pain motivated you to utilize your superior intellect. That was Paul's favorite tool. He always said it would open anything, animate or inanimate. Paul would be very upset if he knew you took that. 
I preferred scalpels myself. I was always disappointed with its results. It made me think the whine from a dentist drill creates as much fear and pain as the drill itself. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to test that hypothesis. A clumsy tool at best, although Paul was partial to it. Sometimes the anticipation of pain is as effective as pain itself. The cage was useful for creating that anticipation. Very effective for increasing the pain without inflicting more tissue damage. I found it more effective with women than men. I'm not sure why. Barbaric. We all have to die, Oliver. Who is to say that one way is worse than any other? Too bad. That was one of Paul's favorites. It's really wedged in there. It's jammed. They are useless as instruments of torture. They do not cause much pain and were therefore ineffective, except of course to immobilize the patient while other therapies were applied. Barbaric, but it did produce results. It was more effective as a threat than as an actual device. Quite effective, not as good as thumbscrews, but they sometimes produced results where nothing else would. Most imprecise. Normally, I would stop the blade after it made the first few cuts. My goal was to shock the patient to his senses through the studied application of fear and pain. We did lose a few patients, but the number is statistically insignificant. Paul's design, actually. Quite clever. Careful, Oliver. I may not let you escape twice. A dull tool is like a dull mind. Neither gets the job done. It's just a bucket, Oliver. Move on. You are never more infuriating than when you try to be humorous. Fascinating. Shelves. Give up, Oliver. Go home. You can't say this game is lacking in humor. Is there anything else Abe wants to discuss with us? You're fu- It appears your wife has come looking for you. Don't worry, I'll attend to her. <laughs> Oliver! She's not here anymore, Oliver. Rebecca has joined Joshua in the secret room. They're waiting for you. We have nothing to discuss, Oliver. Dad, Mom's here, and she's hurt. She's unconscious or something. Is she bleeding? I don't think so. She just won't wake up. Try to stay calm, Josh. Now, I'll be there real soon. I'll let her snuggle Freddy. Maybe that'll make her feel better. Let's find that key. Rhinovirus. It's a bit too fat for a virus. Hit with stick.
This should get me into that closet. It's not a closet, it's a crypt. Open the sarcophagus, Oliver. Open your father's tomb. Your queen commands you. It's why. No, you don't get a comment looking at your tomb. Opens everything. Get inside the sarcophagus, Oliver. Don't be afraid. It's the only way. Don't be afraid, Oliver. Come to Papa. Next time on Blackstone Chronicles, we come to Papa. There may be a bit of a bonus lecture.